Glad you could join me today. I'm in the book of Daniel. Uh, we read the first six chapters, of course, and, uh, and you've read those also, those wonderful stories about uh, Daniel and, uh, and his three friends who didn't eat uh, anything but vegetables and God gave them special wisdom. A couple of those chapters talk about dreams that, uh, that Nebuchadnezzar had that Daniel was able to interpret. A couple of those uh, had to do with other kings. So, for instance, uh, uh, Belshazzar and his, uh, uh, and his image, or excuse me, the handwriting on the wall. It was Nebuchadnezzar and the image that, uh, that the three Hebrew boys didn't uh, bow down to. And then, of course, the famous story of Daniel in the lion's den. So the first half of Daniel are these wonderful, wonderful stories but the second half of Daniel gets into a little bit more prophetic material, but it also gets very, very personal to Daniel. In fact, in chapter 9, he confesses the sins of his fathers, the Jewish people. He confesses those sins. Now, Daniel is an interesting character because in the book of Ezekiel, it tells about how God is so upset with the people of Israel that he was going to bring judgment to them. And it's interesting that in a couple of different places in the book of Ezekiel, he says, even if Samuel and Job and Daniel came to me and pleaded for them, I wouldn't listen. These are three great saints, but the interesting thing is that Daniel was a contemporary. Now, we understand why Ezekiel might have looked back at Job or looked back at, uh, uh, at Samuel and seen great godly men and the great wisdom that they had, but here was someone who was still alive and yet had that reputation. That's, that's very, very significant. And so in chapter 9, we get a glimpse into the inner workings in Daniel's heart. And we see that the Lord um, is, is bringing, or of course, has brought that judgment through the Babylonian captivity upon the people of Judah. And Daniel now prays. And the first thing that he does is he confesses the sins of his fathers. Daniel didn't participate in them. Daniel was not one who went off into idolatry, and yet he connected with the sins of his fathers. He recognized that where he was now, in Babylon, or in Persia, as a result of the Babylonian captivity, that Daniel was one who was, um, who was experiencing the judgment that happened because of the sins of his fathers. Now, in this particular passage of Scripture, I find it very interesting. Verse 5 says, we have, sin we have sinned and done wrong and acted wickedly and rebelled. Now, Daniel's going to go on and delineate specifically why and what those sins were, how it was that they had sinned. But as I read that, the only sin that I can find, the only act of commission, I mean, he, he speaks about acting wickedly, but he doesn't get into specifics. The only specific thing that he says there is that we've neglected your law. Yes, I'm pausing for dramatic effect. We've neglected your law. That's what he says there at the end of verse 5. Turning aside from your commandments and rules. Verse 6, we've not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke your name to our kings and to our princes, and to our fathers, to all the people of, of the land. You see, Daniel recognizes that, that all of the acts of wickedness, all of the violations and sins that his fathers and his whole nation had done, stemmed from this one specific sin of not listening to the word of God. When the prophet spoke it, when Moses wrote it, they did not listen to what the, what the word was. And that's part of the reason why later on in Ezekiel and in, and in Jeremiah, there are these uh, just, just uh, devastating uh, indictments upon 
the shepherds or the under shepherds of Israel because they were charged with giving the people the word of God. And yet in these particular passages, you can read them in Jeremiah 23 and Ezekiel 13 and Ezekiel 34, you can, you can read about the fact that these people did not listen to what God was saying, but instead they spoke what their own thoughts were and what their own minds had conjured up. This is the problem, and this is why Daniel had to confess the sins of his fathers. We live in such a day. You, you know that as well as I. If you've listened to this blog for any, any length of time, you've heard that this is the recurring theme because it's the recurring theme in Scripture, I believe. And so I invite you and urge you, focus on the Scripture. Listen to His voice, and He will, and he will be faithful. Father, we thank You for Your grace to us. Thank You for pouring it out upon us and giving us insights and wisdom and discernment. Speak to us and help us to be uh, have ears to listen and draw near to us. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you. I hope you have a great day.